Yo, you okay, son? What's your name, son? I don't remember. Where'd you come from? I don't remember. What well, do you remember? I remember the Alamo. Yeehaw! What are we reviewing today? Chupacabra versus the Alamo. Sounds great. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a Matthew. Sad little Matthew. Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew didn't drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones there are to be had. Today's episode Chupacabra versus the Alamo. <sighs> Hello, Internet. I'm Cold Matt, and today, rather unfortunately, we're diving back into Sci Fi Channel original movies. Chupacabra vs. the Alamo appeared on Sci Fi Channel in March of 2013. The film was directed by Terry Ingram, director of a lot of Hallmark movies. Yeah, Hallmark Sci Fi, basically the same thing. It was written by Peter Sullivan and Jeffrey Schenick, the writers behind such classics as. The Wrong Crush, The Wrong Neighbor, The Wrong Student, The Wrong House, The Wrong Girl, and The Puppy Who Saved Summer. But we all know the biggest name attached to the film. Jorge Vargas, star of Power Rangers Ninja Storm. Oh, and some guy named Eric Estrada, but what did he ever do? There he is! As of right now, Texas is getting hit with one of the most disastrous hurricanes in recorded history. And also, we just lost Toby Hooper. I've been working on this video far too long for that to have been intentional, but to my fellow Texans, I hope this is somewhat cathartic. Am I wrong? Did they discover the Chupacabra? Feels like I read that a few years ago, that it exists as some type of hairless wolf. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. And something seems missing from this DVD. Let's see, there's Eric Estrada, there's the Chupacabra... Um, oh yeah, the Alamo is missing from the cover of Chupacabra vs. the Alamo. I'm starting to think the Alamo just signed over its name and wanted nothing to do with the movie, because that is clearly not the real Alamo. Guys, this is not that hard. Dude, look, the Alamo is right there! The movie opens on... the cartel? We'll say the cartel until someone says otherwise. Yeah, don't point the flashlight directly at it, we might see how fake it looks. Okay, we all knew the Chupacabra was gonna look fake. This movie at least has the dignity to not show it off until later in the movie. Oh, and then it kills them. And look at this garbage. Do they live in the same city as the Amazing Bulk? Was it seriously so expensive to film a skyline you felt it better to CG it? And the weirdest part is, they do have actual footage of San Antonio. Just only during the day. Maybe they forgot to get night shots and were just like, fuck it, we'll CG it in post. And then we meet Eric Estrada. There he is! Okay, last there he is joke, I promise. You better go. Okay. See you. Hi. You know, everyone makes fun of how bad child actors are, but teenage actors typically aren't much better. Mom would have understood. Mom would understand! We got a mom would understand in the first six minutes of the movie! Oh, it's gotta be a record. <laughs> I hate this movie. Yeah, see, look, you got real exterior shots of San Antonio. Why not just use these earlier? I mean, Eric Estrada's clearly still not in San Antonio, but at least it's real footage and not CG. So Estrada shows up to where the cartel were killed and meets his new partner. And we learn this odd piece of information. Have you ever heard of Juan Sagan? 
Of course. Mexican-American hero of the Alamo. Mm -hmm. That is his great, great, great grandfather. Okay, it's pronounced Juan Seguin. But yeah, it seems like our main character is the descendant of Texas revolutionary Juan Seguin. Because of course he is. They assume it was a rival gang that killed the men and go looking for another way out when they find a chupacabra and manage to kill it. Then Estrada goes to meet his son, who's moved away from home, and... I kinda hate to mention this, but why is his son Asian? I mean, his daughter looked pretty white, but I've known white-looking Mexicans, and maybe she takes after her mother, but, uh... Someone might need to tell Eric he's not the father. Of course, the more important question is, does it even matter? We're not here for the father-son bullshit, get to the damn goat sucker. Actually, where a lot of horror movies save their kills to the very end, which often makes it a long drag to get through, this movie decides it's going to have characters we've never met just get randomly axed off throughout the movie. So Tommy, Eric's son, was the last person the cartel members called, making him their lead suspect. Wh what is this shot? Why would you film a scene through a window like this unless there's someone important standing on the outside? Tommy, get out of here. Uh, why are you letting your only suspect go? I mean, there are definitely ethical problems about interrogating your own son, and in fact, you'd probably be removed from the case if he was your lead suspect, but you definitely can't just let him go. That said, they found the chalupa or whatever in the cave with the bodies, and another body turned up with the same marks with a picture of the thing on his phone, so... I think it's a pretty clear-cut case that these are the killers. So they talk to the medical examiner about the dead quesadilla they brought in, and the lady police says this. It, is it possible that this could be a chupacabra? I mean, the name chupacabra doesn't refer to anything real, and this thing has no name, so we're really just dealing with semantics here. You're talking about an urban legend? Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. What do you mean, absence of evidence? Sure, maybe there's an absence of evidence that these are some mythical creatures that have never been discovered before, but again, there's plenty of evidence to suggest that they are behind the killings. Does it even matter what type of creature they are? Why don't we find some place a little more quiet? After you? Uh, dude? That was clearly, let's go have sex. You might need to move further from the group than that. Like, preferably out of sight. Speaking of out of sight, this dude must be completely blind, because he lets one of the chili rellenos run all the way up and bite his dick off. This is the legendary goat sucker, eh? Guys, seriously, they're like two yards away. Is this the society of aggressively nearsighted people? Cause I could join that society. <laughs> okay, I'll give them that one. The churros attack and the girls run into their school, which was apparently unlocked after hours. And they run straight into Miss Poncharello's third period Jurassic Park ripoff lab. But Estrada makes it to the school just in time. Um, was that a Terminator parody? He's got the leather jacket shotgun combo, and the music was kinda dun 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 dun. I don't know though, it seems rather incidental. Oh, and it turns out this was a Cinco de Mayo party, because this movie is as racially sensitive as some of the comments I've already made in this video. You know what might have been a bit more appropriate for an Alamo movie? Texas Independence Day. Anyways, Estrada sends them to his place, and, um, is his address, like, a satanic thing? Or was it a subtle nod to the German reviews of this film? Hey look, the guys that made things learned what color correction is. I'm one to talk. What the hell was going on with that going overboard review? <laughs> oh man, this is my favorite scene from Gremlins. I mean, come on, you knew the Gremlins ripoff was coming the second she went into the kitchen. Of course, when the Crunchy Tacos attack the house, Eric is on his way. Uh, 
Oh, wow. What a cool dude. But you know what's really cool? Motorcycle safety. Remember, kids, always wear a helmet before using construction equipment to jump over cars. Who by this? Yeah, I'll give him that one too. But as with any action movie where the hero is trying to save his daughter, her best friend gets killed off so he doesn't have to worry about her the rest of the movie. Chupacabra Hospital was filmed in front of a live studio audience. Okay, that was a joke, but this dialogue might as well be from a medical drama. All I wanted was to protect her. I know. I didn't want the same thing to happen to her to happen to Tommy. I wanted her to be different. You did everything you could. I'm not for Brooke. Can you hear me? It's me, Tommy. Dude, it's Tommy, can you hear me? It's like you weren't even trying to reference the Who with that line. But because police can't identify the Chupacabras, they're just gonna do nothing, leaving Estrada and his partner to sort things out on their own. So he asks Tommy to help. Over 30 people died last night, including her best friend. Wait, her hot friend? Oh shit, now I'm in. So Tommy goes to get his gang, led by Jonah Hill from the beginning of 22 Jump Street. You know what it is, shorty. I'm down for the hood. <laughs> Dude, I'm pretty sure I could deliver that line less white than you. In fact, let's see. Hey, what it is, shorty? You know I'm down with the hood. Yeah, we'll call it a draw. Not that the rest of the gang is much better. I'm pretty sure Eric Estrada is the only full-blooded Mexican on this movie, but they're talking like they've spent half their lives south of the border. No one hurts La Familia. Maybe one or two of them are half and half, but you'd think it wouldn't be that hard to cast people who look like the ethnicity they were written as. Then again, this movie was written by two white dudes, so... No matter how fast you think you are, these suckers are faster. Ah, uh, suckers. Because chupacabra means goat sucker. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was just a coincidence, but I liked it. Also, it turns out some of Estrada's cop friends came to help, so... I kinda doubt Tommy's four gang members are really gonna swing this fight. And then we get into the part of every movie I have the most trouble talking about. The climax. I mean, the effects are bad, the editing isn't appealing, but there's not a lot to make fun of. No dumb dialogue or plot inconsistencies, just guys shooting chupacabras in an abandoned warehouse. You know, I'm starting to see why the Alamo isn't on the cover. I will give the physical actors some credit, they move like something actually is attacking them. If only these things didn't look like they should be fighting the birds from Birdemic. Well, I might have been wrong about the gang members not being able to help, because they're the only ones that survive. Makes sense to me- it's Chupacabra versus the Alamo, did you expect it to make sense? Man, the first episode of Walking Dead looks way worse than I remember. They did their duty. Sorry, I'm five years old. Okay, this more or less confirms my suspicion that none of these people were ever in San Antonio. Just green screened in. Nice knowing I spent more time in San Antonio over spring break than these actors in a movie about the Alamo. But finally, over an hour in, it's Chupacabras actually versusing the Alamo. Or the Alamo. And guess what? The Alamo apparently keeps old functional muskets fully loaded in easily breakable display cases. I'm sure that's safe. Oh, that's a knife. Crocodile Dundee. Because we've already ripped off everything else. Best part of this action sequence? When Estrada chops off one of their heads with a fucking sword. They're trapped, but they mention an urban legend that someone dug an escape tunnel. And wouldn't you know, when they were remodeling this place into a museum, which the real Alamo doesn't look like, by the way, they just boarded up the tunnel and never mentioned it. And it just opens up into the parking lot across from the Alamo. They had to have known that was there. 
So they escape through the tunnel and blow up the goddamn Alamo. I guarantee you the first draft of this script was Chupacabras kill people. Eric Estrada blows up the Alamo. The end. I'm not sure if this is awesome or historically insensitive. It is the best part of the film, so we'll go with awesome. And they live happily ever after. The end. So that's Chupacabra vs. the Alamo. What did you expect? It's Chupacabra vs. the Alamo! This is one of those movies with a wacky title and a B-list celebrity to draw you in that then has nothing to offer. It begins and ends with a concept. But of course, sci-fi is kind of known for that, so it's not really a surprise. Don't watch this movie. No matter how much the title draws you in, it's not worth it. It's the film equivalent of a clickbait title. And I, for one, am not a fan. So, if you'll excuse me... Well, hi, Matt. Tequila. What? I need tequila. Are you sure that's a good idea? I'm already in the kitchen drinking tequila. Are you sure? Because last time you, uh... Drank tequila, you passed out, and when you woke up, you started putting Pee Wee's Big Adventure, so... Hey, I can hold my liquor. Day is! That's, that's not the Alamo, but it is a for use in the Texas Revolution, so uh, I think that's a little more accurate than anything in the movie.